Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bobby F. Perryhar, the solution artist here with a really amazing, super good friend of mine. Uh, and it's crazy because I've only had an interaction with him like maybe like twice. This is maybe our third or fourth time they've actually got a yeah. chance to sit down. But uh, it's nuts because uh, Roy Bristow is going to basically be the man who helped me, uh, you know, and, he, and that was the one who basically opened up my heart, opened up my eyes in a very peculiar way. And, uh, you know, now that I'm, I'm interviewing people of interest, this is one of the most interesting people in my life. And the reason for that is I'll tell you guys a story. Um, I, uh, I, I don't know how, I don't even know where to start, but I, when I, when I first started doing numerology, I started uh, meeting people and uh, Roy was one of them. He was a client of mine. And then when we did our, our session together, uh, I quickly found out that he was a bit of a spiritual aficionado himself and that uh, he had these very interesting gifts that, you know, are almost even hard to quant quantify. I mean, I'll, I'll let you talk about that when, when we get you on here, Roy. But, uh, you know, I, I was like, something told me that I wanted to meet up with this guy. I wanted to find out more about this. And one thing that was drilled inside my mind was that as a spiritual co wellness coach, as a business strategist, spiritual business numerologist, whatever you call it, I don't even know what I am anymore. Uh, you know, that, that I had to find help for myself. I had to go back to find me. I had to grow myself if I was planning on serving a massive level of audience myself. So it ended up turning into a really powerful business for me. I ended up becoming, you know, uh, a person of value to, to so many. And I feel like, like spiritually blessed that I was able to go through that. But right at the very beginning of the journey, like, and this is when I say the beginning of the journey, I mean, like, around the entry point to when I was actually charging for clients. Up until then, for, for the three years before that, numerology was a hobby and a secret little party trick. But then I started using it in the realm of helping people find their gifts or find their power, or find alignment in their life. And uh, yeah, so I, I, a part of our conversation, if it's okay with you, Roy, would be to look at your numbers again. If you want to like sort yeah. of dive in there and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're really interesting. Because I think if I remember right, like the, like my new, it was all interconnected. So like the 6th and the 7th, because I was born on the 6th of July, 1972. Cool. It kept reappearing. And you found it very unusual that, or like, and the numbers in my name kept reappearing all throughout my name and. <laughs> if I remember rightly, yeah. So I know it's very. You found it unusual and fascinating. Well, you know what? It's funny how much I've grown since then, and uh, I'd like to think that you helped me in a very strong way. And it was, uh, it was when when I got a chance to sit with you, and when I got a chance to sit with you, it, this is the weirdest experience ever. And I and this is why I'm so super excited to have you here. <laughs> so you changed my life, man. <laughs> you changed my life, and I, I can't say that about too many of the people that I I work with, but you have gone down in the hall of fame of people of value inside of my world. So I appreciate you so much. Uh, but let's talk about some of this stuff. The day that we That's met, me <laughs> the day that we met for my session, the day that we met for my session, uh, I, I don't know. I felt I, 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 I pre-framed this by telling you guys, I was like, Oh, I uh, had to clean myself up. I had to come back for myself. And there was mm. this looming conversation that year. This is 2017. Um, that I wanted to find the love of my life this year. Like this was the year I was going to find the love of my life. And here we are at the end of the year, like more or less, like somewhere like in the, in September or could have even been sometime in December. <laughs> Actually it was, it was on, it had to have been December because the yeah. day that we spoke about this was literally the day I met my Sally. And, uh, yeah, this well, I, th I think you met, you met her the day after, I believe. I, we talked the day after. Yeah. But I messaged her on Plenty of Fish dating site oh, the day of our... Oh, yeah, I didn't know that bit. So, because Sally and I knew each other from Plenty of Fish, popular dating site. Oh, my God, it works, right? right? Uh, and then I, I looked at this, and I, I had a dream about this woman. I'm not sure if you remember this part of the story or not, but I had a dream about this, this dark-haired Filipino girl uh, back in the summer sometime. She would given me a kiss on the beach. And uh, I was like, mm. cool, okay. I felt that was very, very prophetic. I thought that... That was God kind of telling me to relax and chill a little bit. And she's coming, just relax. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, everything I dream so it has a meaning for me. And then uh, when we had our chat, you went into, that was the only way I can explain this. You went into my inner parts of my soul and you told me a story about myself that I was experiencing from a past life or from a, a past energy 
about the journey that I had gone through about my love life. And it was a, a, like a challenge of um, being blind to love. And then the, the, mm. the topic got into this conversation about me being uh, struck in the face or something happened to me. Uh, very like they took me out and I didn't see it coming. And then as we're talking, it felt like I had dust in my eye. It felt like I had like, and not that little like, oh, it must be dusty in here and I'm misty eyed and I'm crying. No, it was like, I felt like I got something in my eye that was coming out. And you're like, yeah, it's gonna, that's going to happen for the next few days. And I'm like, really? And I kept on doing things like this with my face, like sort of like trying to peel it out. And I, it kept on feeling like it kept on, because like, yeah, those are little spiritual bits of stuff. And then we talked about dragons. We talked about the one that lives with me and this powerful feeling of just like these spirit guides and it had your own flavor your own recipe on it it was like a, a, a beautifully entailed tale but you told me yeah i know you're blind to love like you're, you're ready for it but what's going on and this and that and you know i uh i, I and then that night I, I messaged sally for the first time and it was a really crazy time because it was at uh 11 28 um 6, 64 okay and for people who are like, I don't know, I mean, whatever. I'm born on the 28th, and my name Bobby says six four. You add six plus four equals one. You add two plus eight equals ten, which is one. Same thing. Eleven was one 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 one. And this was the moment that the email hit her and said, or that like you know she received my message or whatever. And it was this very prophetic time that I was meeting my soulmate for the first time. I met her. We fell in love like rapidly. It was only about six weeks later. I was living on the island. I moved like two hours away from my house. Two weeks later, we got pregnant. We traveled the world. I became a, like a like a on like a on stage speaker for 500 people inside of Australia. We went to Shanghai, Philippines. A year later, I'm experiencing the same kiss that I had in the dream. I love telling the story because it's like so. Oh, super. Wow, that's awesome! It was crazy. I was I was we we're on the beach and the sun was gleaming and it made my vision a little bit like like bleary. Like I couldn't quite see it very much. Her hair was like, you know, like straight up black. She came in and gave me a kiss and I'm like, oh, this is it. This is the dream. Oh my God. <laughs> I felt it. I felt it. We took a picture and everything and it was a wonderful magical experience. But I recognize that in, you know, if I want to, if I want to get into the logical terms, I felt like because I was in so much stress, I disconnected from myself, actually projected, looked at my future and then came back and kind of was like, I, I came back to my, my, my mind. I was in my psychic abilities at that moment. But uh, meeting you felt like you did something for me. And I'd like to think it's all that divine destiny that you were supposed to be there at the right time. And this was supposed to be an honor that I was supposed to give to you. I was supposed to help you in some way. So when I, I knew when I, was, when I would have my podcast, so I, would, I would come back for the people who were there for me in my life and showcase the amount of gratitude, power, and, uh, you know, that I have. As people, I, I, I like to help and I, I want to be there for you. So when you're like, oh, actually, I'm, I'm putting my business full swing, you know, I'm growing, I'm expanding right now. I'm like, well, in comes uh, production level Bobby now. You know, we're we're going to have a conversation about this and people are going to hear it. We're going to want to reach out to you. And it's just a beautiful feeling to offer that space for you. So I know it's a little long-winded introduction, but uh, I, I, it feels like without our talk, being blind to love, I may have never had a uh, message Sally. It feels like I may have never have had my son or traveled the world. Like all of yeah. this stuff is that butterfly effect to think that there's yeah. something really strong that we play a part in each other's lives. Is it any mystery that you're listening to this story right now? If you're hearing the recording and you're getting a chance to feel that, that beat inside of your soul saying, I need, I need to talk to Roy with something I'm blind to and I can smell it the same way I could smell my love life, but I just couldn't see two feet in front of me because apparently I had yeah, a spiritual it's interesting. Loop. Yeah, it's interesting because when our senses, one of our senses goes, the other ones get stronger. So you could smell your love because you couldn't see it. And like all the energetical things that happen will often manifest physically into our world. But we don't realize that's actually what's going on. So we don't really pay any attention. And what I tend to do is I see the obvious. So when, so someone like yourself, probably like when you're going, but oh, you know, but I can smell my, smell this love coming in, but I can't see it. To me, the obvious thing is, well, obviously, then one of your other senses isn't working. Then <laughs> just the way I see things, it, it's just crazy. Yeah, and that's part of my gift. I can just see the the absolute obvious that everyone in the, you know, we often overlook the simplest of things and just carry on like. And then when someone points out, we go, 
have I never noticed that before? You know, I've been like this for 20 years and I've never noticed it. And then it's, and it's that right under our nose syndrome where we just, yeah, we, we just think, don't, we just shrug our shoulders and go, well, I've always been that way. Well, like, how am I going, oh, have you not seen that? <laughs> have you not realised that? Me, I've, I've, had, oh, I've had countless instances of me showing people the, what I see as obvious. And it, and it took me many, many years of operating, you know, starting to get, in a really full on part of operating into my gift to realize that that was my gift and nobody else could see what I could see. So now, you know, so yeah, so everybody I come across, they're always, everybody I come across are, are doing something in their lives. That's not obvious to them. That's obvious to me. And, and that's how I help people. And you know, well, that's one of the, one of the, you know, the most profound ways that I show people this most obvious thing that makes a profound difference. So, yeah, and, and it's all mm, soul very, level. Soul it's level. Very, uh, it's very superhero stuff that we're about to look at. And and you, when we mentioned this before, you're like, yeah, I had a bunch of six and sevens and ones in my chart. Born on a seven mo- a month, a six day, a one year. Uh, your last name says six one seven. Your name Roy says six and seven in it. Edward, your middle name has got a six and a one in it. So there's this concept of these six stands for family, love, connection, teaching, mentorship, growing. One stands for independence, a bit of a bit more of that, like uh, I want to be on my own, a, a little bit of that lone wolf kind of vibe, that like independence and not really seeking approval. And then the seven says things like journeying, intuition, awareness. So when you're not really stuck at this ego level of who am I, it's more of a, I'm going to serve everyone and I'm off somewhere else into the spiritual world looking into something makes me, of course, realize, oh, we're, we're trusting what you have to say especially because I mean, and I'm, I, I'll, I'll be fair and Frank. Um, I, we, I talked to a lot of spiritual people. Everyone's got some kind of cool little story and their own little take on things, but you can tell when someone is kind of just trying to interpret what they're seeing and another one's really like sort of giving you what they see. And when we was talking to you, it was a very uh, fantastical conversation. Like dragons came up, guardian angels came up, uh, names came up uh, like a really uh, even like past life experiences came up and a lot of people out there are going to be like, you know, Oh, how do you know this? And like, what is, how does that even make sense? And da 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 da. when I see your numbers, I'm like, uh, I don't care how he knows it. I don't care what that, how, if it makes sense or not, it's a profound level of emotion that it brings me to that brings it in. So if in case you're skeptical, I get it. Everyone is kind of like that, but the conversations with you can get pretty, as I say, fantastical. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting because when I look at your name, Roy Edward Bristow, okay, this is you as a, as a, as a lad, like you're born, this number says all, uh, cosmic artist, <laughs> universal humanitarian philanthropic level of big hit. So there's going to be a challenge mm-hmm. inside of this because you're going to always want to draw the picture out for some people. And then uh, on the other side is this warrior, this visionary traveler, kind of like I'm on a spiritual path. And it's nice to see, because I, when I look at this, I'm like, man, this is the guy that was there for me and helped me through a really you know, strong, solid piece of my soul. So when, when we're looking at this, it's an absolute honor to have you here, my friend. Uh, would love to explain, you know, maybe you can give the guys a little idea of like, what it is that you actually do. Like, is there a word for this? Or Yeah, so it's taken me quite a while to find out, you know, more throughout my spiritual growth i've had many different names from using just my name to being rainbow native to being intuitive healer to being and i could it never felt right to pinpoint you know it's always like yeah okay this name it's in the ballpark or it's close to the ballpark and but it's all i can come up with right now and it, and it was frustrating my, a lot of my journey has been frustrating because i could never pinpoint and tell people what i did because half the t- I was still finding out myself for a lot of my journey. And then it's only in the last probably six months that I've been given a name that fits. And it's a soul energy traveler. So I journey into people's soul level. And it's interesting that you've used the word soul a couple of times already during the conversation. So yeah, it just, it's, so yeah, I just go into people's soul. And because that's where all answers lie. Our whole lives, future, past, multidimensional, off-world, starseed, they all reside in our soul. So when, I, when, I'm, when people come to me and, you know, they want to know their next part of their journey or they want to meet the love of their life or they want to know how their business is going to do, 
all answers are in their soul, in their soul energy, in their soul contract. And that's where I go looking, you know, because the physical, the physical life just gives me insights, but it doesn't give me answers. The emotional stuff going on just gives me insights, but that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. So I just use them as stepping stones as like warnings, you know, like uh, warning lights or message, you know, just like little guides so anything that's going on in your emotional life is just a guide for me anything that's going on in your physical life is just a guide for me and i just see the obvious where it truly lies in your soul and yeah so i just go okay yeah no and i'll often cut people off during the session when they start to talk about their what's going on in their physical life because i've already been stepped into their soul so i'm like yeah okay you give me the information i need to know we don't need to talk about that what we need to talk about is your energetic truth not your physical world truth which is just your own belief anyway of what your life should be so your soul truth is very very different to your physical world truth and, and that's where i take people this is so cool i uh, i usually yeah. and, and and i what i like to think is that because back to the numerology sort of uh footnotes on here uh because there's a seven in most of the weaving in and out of your name and your chart and all that stuff it, it offers you this spiritual intuition or this soul clarity, uh, intuitive awareness um, that you can sort of see beyond the physical uh, grain. And when I'm doing this and I'm listening to you, I'm putting myself in the audience position. I'm listening to you as if I'm one of my audience who's downloaded us on one of our major channels or whatever. And like, you know, they're watching this or they're listening to this. And most of my clients are I need to make money, I want to find love, or I want to find my purpose myself, or I, you know, I want to live life on my own channel. And it's like, it's like the, those are the major sort of topic points. Yeah. And when we first connected, uh, I, I, I guess I'd like to think that my business was on the rise. I wasn't too concerned about what I was going to do about my financial side, but I was a bit yeah. anxious about my love direction. Uh, when I'm looking towards my audience now, when I, I could feel it, when I was listening to you, I can feel this energy of like, well, what about the money thing? Like, what am I blocked in inside of making my business happen? Like one business will thrive. Another one's stuck sputtering. One business is going to grow. Another piece of me seems to can't get the wheel on the car properly. I'm not, I'm not on the right road. And this is what happens to so many of my clients that they just can't quite hold it, keep it all together. And I didn't know mm. if it was a safe place or not. And I, I did feel a little uh, anxiety about throwing myself out there since I'm the one having the interaction with you to be like, Roy, do you see my blocks in wealth? Do you see why I'm experiencing this dichotomy in my life where I'm very successful in one realm of my business, my super, my spirituality, my numerology, my spiritual coaching, but then my direct sales business is like trying, it's like I'm something is anchored there or something is like a limiting belief. When I, when I work and I do my stuff in there, I'm almost rolling my eyes I'm thinking, I don't know how to do this. How do I find someone who can help me? I'd rather just do a go live and just, you know, talk to my audience and connect with them on the spiritual level. And a lot of people are sitting there being like, oh my God, what's Roy going to say? How's he going to answer this one? Because they're probably dealing with a lot of the same issues. And I was just kind of yeah. like half hoping for myself, trying to hide it underneath me, helping my audience out. Is there something that did I get struck in another part of my face when it came yeah. to my wealth here? Like, what's going on? Well, the, the strange thing is like, so the first thing that appeared, so to give the, the audience a bit more insight as well, I work, um, spirit allows me to feel what's going on in others. So we, when, you, when we first connected and you had that eye stuff going on, I could feel that my eyes were blocked. It's like my eyes felt blocked. And so since the second we started talking, there's like two heartbeats in your ears. It's like there's a heartbeat in each of my in each of my ear. Now, normally when I get anything going on in my ears, it means either people aren't listening or they've got really strong clear audience. But I know that's not your gift. You know, we've already had that conversation. We've tuned in before. And, and but the difference here is the fact that I'm feeling a heartbeat in your ears. So you're listening to love. So it's you're listening to what you love, but it feels like that's all you're doing. You're not, you know what it is that, you, what you do. So you see how my voice has even gone. So I don't even know how to interpret what I'm hearing. And so there's a disconnection somewhere. 
because as soon as we started talking about it, I know we're talking about the right subject because the heartbeats have stopped. So when spirit stopped me feeling it, it means I'm on the right. I've got the right message. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so where you're trying to create your money is not the right place because it's not what you love. It's like the information you're getting through what you love is not you're then channeling you're trying to channel that information into a different direction and that's why that disconnection's happening mm. so you've with you you've got to redirect to where you want to create that money and you recreate that in the right area and it will flow does that make sense I, I, unfortunately it does it feels like i'm moving powerfully into the direction i'm moving into for a specific purpose and reason but then to think that this business and this sort of thing that i've gotten into was the reason why i even found my spiritual road in the first place so there's that loyalty yeah. in there that says look I, I i love what i do but it's hard but it also was the reason why it gave me what i have and, and what i've been able yeah. to become you know from that yeah but like, and that's it. And loyalty offers, yeah, loyalty often keeps us stuck. And it, and it's going, but oh yeah, but I made such great connections in that arena, and you know, and there's so so many beautiful people, and and you, and it's that society you don't want to upset people thing by walking away. But it's like you've ultimately you've got to follow your journey. Spirit wants us to follow our journey. Mm. And you know, and I've kicked so many people's asses during my sessions because they're just not following. They're going, yeah, look, I, I, and I get that. I've tried to fit in, but the only world you'll ever fit into is your own. Wow. That's the, that's the only world you'll ever fit into. Your world is, look, I mean, I've met some gifted people, mate. I really have, right? And when you did the new, when we had our first session and you was doing your numerology stuff with me, you blew me away. I'm like, this guy is not a numerologist. Nowhere freaking near. Not the stuff you do, the, what you channel. And the fact that, you know, when, when you're doing the right stuff, when you're not doing the right stuff, the, your heart beats louder to make you hear your own heart. That's why you can hear it in your own ears. That that, that, that pressure in your blood is going so, if we took it, talk about it on a physical level, even though it's happening on an energetic level, your heart is beating that powerful when you're not doing your passion to earn your money. It's making your heartbeat appear in your ears. And I've never experienced that before, by the way. So, you know, so, and I've seen your passion when you're doing your numerology. That's where you're going to make your money. Nowhere else. Wow. So, and, and anything else that comes in, it might just be a temporary, you've got to look at it as going, okay, well, it's not numerology, so it's going to be a temporary thing. Or it's like, oh, you've got to look at it going, okay, what have I tried to manifest recently? A new car, okay, this is going to come in, it's going to earn me just enough money to buy a new car with. And then it will go again. So the purpose of the other arena was to open you up to clients, was to really put you into the real arena of you doing new numerology with everyone and practicing and getting and realizing that's your passion, that's what you do. Wow. <laughs> this is too profound. This is very profound because, you know, just to validate my audience and for you guys listening, the list goes on, retreats, events, businesses on businesses, uh, personal branding, packaging program. Like I've got so many ideas on how to create and I'm like overflowing with ideas inside of my personal wellness and spiritual wellness business. Couldn't write an ad that could approve for the life of me. And to the point where I hire the people to do it. I've got my wife on the case. She's building this business. And like, for me, I'm just thinking, sitting there, I'm like, wow, you make really good. Even to the point where it's just that pulsing in my ears that like is I can denote very clearly. And it's like, wow, that's so, so super true. And, and just to be fair with anyone building their business, a lot of us that who listen to this audience are, are already within our community. Uh, they're probably thinking, uh Oh, so how do I become successful if this isn't supposed to be what I'm doing? And what I'm hearing is that if this is a mix between, you know, Bobby and Roy on stage here, that it's like, look, it may have gotten you started, but there's a deeper giant, a deeper dragon awakening within you that this is a catalyst for. And uh, it even echoes back to how I wanted to build my business. I mean, I don't want to build it. Yeah. I want to find people who do, and I want to be hands-free because I don't, I don't feel like that's my arena. I feel like I'm supposed to be the spiritual guy. And then I come up yeah. with an opportunity there to be like, it's, it's there. I'm, I don't identify with it. Talk to my wife or talk mm -hmm. to my team or talk to somebody else. 
Uh, but for me, it feels a very strong disconnect. And it wasn't the answer I was looking for. I thought, I thought maybe you were just going to sandpaper some stuff out of my face again. <laughs> like, here, yeah, let me yeah. pull this out of you. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you've evolved from beyond that, you know, but it's, it's about, because, because we've gone from the third dimensional energy thinking, which is all about money and wealth, and we're coming into five dimensional world thinking, it's all about passion, doing what we love doing what we'll come down here to do so for anybody listening if you want to make the money if you want to be wealthy follow your passion do what you meant to come down here to do you follow your passion the money will come and all the doors will open and it'll, the journey will actually be quite easy compared to trying to chase money when you, you're trying to chase business you're trying to run clients and you you're pushing hard on social media and doing all this hard work your passion isn't hard work your passion is downright easy. Like my passion is really starting to open up now. And, you know, and I'm destined to be in Canada. That's where my destiny lies. And the fact that a couple of years ago I met you and then just as all the Canada stuff start. So within, I think two weeks of the Canada stuff being presented to me, I didn't go looking for it. I didn't know about it. Spirit just went, right, now we're going to tell you this and it's going to happen. So just get on with it. And that's how spirit talk. They go, look, we want you to do this. You're meant to do this. This is where your passion is going to take you. So just do it. And if I don't, if I don't, if I don't, if I didn't accept it and start doing it, my life would be really hard now because huh. I'd have spirit and all my guys just kicking my ass going, this is going to happen. So just, just get your head around it. So because I'd had those teachings many times before over the last five or six years, as soon as the information came in, so to give, the, give you a bit of insight, Bob, and also the people listening, um, I emigrated to Australia from England and I went for a, a read, I went for a tarot reading one, one year and the lady said, have you ever thought about going to back in England uh, around 2004, 2000, about 2004, I think it was around, funnily enough, I think it was about November, 2004. And um, the lady said, you ever thought about moving to Australia? And I was like, well, how would I want to go there? You know, I'm full of deadly creatures. I don't like spiders. Hell no. I was, within, I was in Australia just over three years after that reading. So I kind of got a three years heads up. Now, during my course in Australia, I initially moved to Melbourne. And then in 2016, I moved to the Gold Coast. So within about... Again, around November time, 2016, I started getting a sense that uh, my final destination is going to be America. So that started to drop in. So then fast forward to 2019, uh, oh, only about five weeks ago now, six weeks, six weeks at most, um, I helped a friend out that was just having a, a um, some living issues and I said well just come and stay at mine for the night and I've got a spare room you know and she's a spiritual woman and I'd, I'd literally only met her about three or four days previously it's just the universe maneuvering people around as it does and, and because I'm well aware of that I'm just like okay what what have they got for me this time so we sat we sat talking for most of the night and she says um you're going to be going to Canada within three years so I'm like okay there's a three-year heads up and um, but she said but i feel it might be well within three years i was like okay no worries well that's given me three years kind of makes sense there's and i thought because throughout all that time the america thing never quite felt right and i don't know if it's like well if that's just me or i've got all the information and it, all it was i was just the wrong side of the border so i was still on the right continent and then so that was on a tuesday then come the sunday i was working at an expo doing readings all day and I met this lady for the first time who was doing her first expo. And Spirit was just hassling me. It was a quiet day. So most of the day we was doing readings for each other and just chatting and getting to know each other, all the other readers. And the, um, yeah, so the Spirit was just hassling me going, you need to ask that lady. She's got a time frame for you. So I was like, I said to the lady, I said, look, apparently you've got a time frame for me. I can't give you any details on what it is but I'll tell you afterwards. And she just looked, turned around, looked at me dead in the eye and went five months. And I'm like, and I just looked at spirit and went, so you've gone from three years to five months. You gotta be kidding me. 
and this so yeah and then then all the doors and all the things started and then within two weeks of that happening you contact me saying do you want to do an interview and i'm like okay so you know it all starts dropping in but then when i thought about it the, the three year heads up for the move to a different country was given three years ago when i started getting the sense that america is going to be a destination after australia so and that happened around the november so and i'm the, the current estimate estimate is to be in Canada in November. Hmm. So for those watching, maybe when you move in different countries, you get a three year heads up because they've got to give you time to get your head around it. But West yeah. Coast Canada is where I'm at. I'm on Vancouver Island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where I'll be coming to Vancouver. There you go. There you go. He's just, he yeah. just invited himself over to my house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Off yeah. 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 We'll, we'll catch up person to person this year. Oh, that is so super cool, man. Because uh, yeah. for, like the, 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 the spider sense tingling inside of my soul here is like, you're going to see a freshly married version of me. And this like the, mm. the full um, product of what your coaching and what your product is and who you are and all, your, I can't even say product. I want to say like your spiritual offering to the universe and to see mm. that, like that manifestation right in front of you. I can't wait for you to see my kids and meet my son. But unbelievable. Oh, like, yeah. it's, it's pretty crazy. You're going to see it. Looking forward to meeting your missus, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, because you know, if you're going to go into a business, you always want to meet the boss, don't you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. I was even telling her, and she's taking care of the kids right now, but I'm like, this is going to be a faded meeting for you to meet this fellow. And uh, I say that to absolutely anyone and everyone who has that, that can, that was like, oh my God, I can hear my heartbeat. I can feel it. I can feel I hear it. I know what he's saying. It's because there's that energy in there that's like, this message was meant for you. This message was meant for you to really see what this can do, to mm. see the um, energy and passion behind me and you've trusted me. And then to, to see this is how I've been able to, to get to where I'm at is by enlisting professionals, hiring them to help me become a better person. And if I'm like, well, that's what I do for a living, damn right, I'm going to be finding the best of the best, the world's best. And uh, it, it, it's spiritually validating that you're so connected it makes me feel very safe around your energy uh and you, mm. you make it very calm like you've got a very like uh hugh jackman meets sean connery kind of thing going on like you know it's oh, a combination of just like super gentlemen but also like really good stuff and i really appreciate mm. it, man like this I, I i could go on forever and i absolutely will I, household name for sure I, yeah i always love talking to you because it's just the you know the the amount of tingles that flow through my body when we're talking and you know it's just yeah yeah what honestly when i when i'm talking when i talk to people about numerology or they bring the subject up you always get a mention because i say oh you should you should go if you want to see what numerology is go and go and have a session with this guy because that's just yeah if you want to see how numerology really should be oh yeah because you you just I don't know where you channel from, mate, but yeah, it's incredible to watch. It's super it strange. Was, I love it. I've, yeah, I've I just embraced it. I, 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 was, I was just blown away. I was like, this is incredible to watch. And just yeah, watching right. you go, blah, blah, blah. Like you was picking, and it was like you was picking the numbers out of the air, and even though you got written, and it was just like, and your eyes were just, <laughs> your eyes were doing whatever your eyes were doing. I'm like, yeah, this is just, this is brilliant. It's like, it's like watching a show. Oh, I appreciate you, man. And, and yeah, it was just, yeah. Yeah, friends for life. Absolutely, friends for life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, as a, as a matter of fact, small little, um, I guess, an invitation. You kind of really can't turn it down right now because you're on my podcast. But uh, your involvement in my life, as with another list of my, I would call sages, gurus, my masters, my spiritual mentors, uh, the, the catalysts in my life, and you're on that list, one of the most important ones I consider. Uh, I've been envisioning this like these events or this places to speak together and you know to think yeah. that you'd be coming into the island and that feeling it's like or to the mainland at least you know to the country uh whether you come to the island or i come to the mainland but i'm gonna definitely connect with you um but yeah it, it just makes me feel like there's work to be done and these are yeah. you know, we're finding each other this is the part of the movie where you go all over the world and you know they find the superhero team and they, they they combine together to make their their outfit and uh and, and we should do big things on the planet I know that you're already yeah. doing big things on the spiritual soul level for for the individuals who know you. So I yeah, would yeah. say, you know, if you're listening to this, do yourself a favor, 
get in with this man while you can before he figures it out and his rates double and triple and uh, he's unavailable and you know you can't get a hold of him because uh, when I look at this I'm like oh man I knew him right when he was like you know opening up his gifts and I'm not sure how much of astrology you follow but there's like so much stuff happening in the last month and a half and retrograde solar storms yeah, solar flares and yeah, so I feel all, I actually feel this stuff energetically. So to give, again, give the viewers and the listeners some ins insight into my energetical journey. So most people out there will still get affected by the full moon. It's one of the most common things, especially for empaths, that when the full moon comes around, it whacks them around a bit. Um, Mercury in retrograde is another thing that whacks people around a bit and they feel all these energetic imbalances and they feel a bit off for a few days. Then they try and use crystal protection or meditation and stuff like that to block out the full effects of it so they can survive for a few days. Well, me, I just embraced the energy. I just soaked it in. So when I first, but to me, it just seemed the natural thing to do, the natural progression. Okay, the full moon's whacking me out. How do I deal with that? And so, and it's just like, okay, well, I'll just grow energetically so I'm stronger than the full moon so I don't feel it. So that was that was that, and then then I started getting whacked out by different planets in retrograde. So again, it's like, okay, well, how do I deal with that? And again, it was about growing energetically as a being, as an energetic being, so that I was stronger than the energy buffets from the planets. So I could still. So when I saw it on like social media, or someone said, "Oh, that's going into retrograde," that's how I'd find out, rather than it whacking me out for a few days. Mm. And then so then it was doing the same thing with solar flares they started whacking me out so it's like my natural progression spirit were giving me um bigger planetary bodies or bigger energetical things going on for me to outgrow and and then and then so that it just seemed like a natural progression then the last thing that whacked me out and this was again i think it was the end of last year when that big asteroid was going close, what they call close, close by to earth, even though it was about 225,000 miles away. That was the last thing that whacked me out because it was just something new traversing through the cosmos close to the earth. And its energy signature was unusual to me. And it was making me go, and I was like, what the hell is this whacking me out? Because I knew it wasn't retrograde. I knew it wasn't solar flares. I knew it wasn't the full moon. And then I just happened to hear on the news that about the asteroid, I was like, oh, there we go. There's that no another planetary body that, that I'm feeling so probably the next thing that will probably whack me out will be a comet because I've not experienced the energy of those before and there's got to be one due sooner or later because they come around about every 25 years um so, so I guess what I've what I've seen or I've, I've heard about in the last like maybe six to eight weeks there's five or six planets in retrograde we had a lunar eclipse mm. in the South America there's a solar eclipse happening somewhere else yep. as well uh, and then we also had some solar flare happen. There's a cosmic couple yeah. cosmic showers going to happen in August. Uh, and then I, someone just sent this to me today. And this is super dating us right now because uh, by the time people listen to this, they're gonna, it's going to be hindsight. So we're, we have to pay attention to the fact that, hey, this may be July 2019 now, but feel free to have your own cosmic experience right now in the time that you're listening to this, whenever you're in it. But I just wanted to quickly pull it out because it's literally sent to me like 50 minutes before we, we sat down. Yeah. July 25, July 26, the end of a cosmic cycle and the start of a new galactic year. Tw July 25th is the last day of the Mayan and galactic calendar and is known as the day out of time when Earth realigns with galactic time. It is perceived as a day to pause and release all old energy and forgive the past before moving into a new cosmic year. July 26 um, marks a new galactic year and is a highly charged with cosmic energy. On this day, a portal opens, bringing a brand new frequency to our planet. The energetic influence can entirely reset our existence as we know it and may feel like we've taken a huge quantum leap. We may suddenly see with greater clarity and gain major insight into things we've struggled to understand. Our timeline may alter rapidly and we'll be able to effortlessly let go of anything, anyone, out of alignment and our ability to magnetically attract soul-fulfilling connections and experiences will amplify. It is now time to set the intentions and trust the universe to magnify manifestations. My fellow Alex Miles, this is just something you read on the internet. And I, I read this and I'm like, whoa. And yeah, uh, I, I thought maybe you might want to touch base on this and add a little bit of fire to this flame. Yeah, yeah. So I read that. Um, I read the exact same thing yesterday, I believe I, I read it. I came across it. Yeah. And it's very interesting because this week, 
this week has been odd. You know, I feel my whole environment. I feel the whole energy of the environment. So for me to feel that the energy is odd is odd in itself. Mm. Because normally, you know, like if there's retrogrades going on, it doesn't feel odd. If there's solar flares going on, it doesn't feel odd. You know, the full moon energy doesn't feel odd because it happens every month. Mm. And so for me to feel the energy is odd, I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? Because it felt like I'd been switched off. Mm. It felt like a part of me had been switched off. And and I, I'd sp- spoken to a few of my other friends, uh, spiritual friends, and, and they was going, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling the same. Like, what's going on? And then when I read that, I was like, ah, I said, I said it's because it's the changeover from 3D to 5D. Wow. So, you know, a lot of people are having to, over the ne- especially over the next six months and probably to the end of 2020, people are going to have to start really releasing old ways of doing things, even if they've done it for 25 years. Right. They've got to release, you know, they might have been doing something that's helped them be successful, especially spiritual people where they've had certain mentors that they've been going to for 20 years. It's been teaching them. It's time to let that go and, and step into your own power. Mm. Trust that you've got your own guides that know your journey better than someone that's been trying to teach you that for 15 years, five years, two years. We're, we're going to get forced away from things we've been doing for a long time because it, our whole energy has just been upgraded. And the reason a lot of us this week may have felt like we've been switched off or like something inside of us isn't working. It's because we're like mobile phones and we're lot and computers essentially is that when they upgrade, they reboot. Mm-hmm. And we just had over the last 18 months has been a massive amount of upgrades going on. So it's, it's like we've gone from windows seven to windows 10 for for want of a better term, our whole operating system has upgraded from third dimensional thinking to fifth dimensional thinking. So we're going away from power and control and wanting and, and, and ego and wanting to be better than others to having collectives and encouraging everyone to be their best versions of themselves. Your wisdom is divine, my friend. Like I'm just having a profound experience looking into the time glass of my life being like, oh my God, this is it, this is it. And I know a lot of people are gonna say the same, I can also hear a lot of people being like, oh my God, help me. I'm trapped. I'm underneath the rubble of what society, my family and generations deep have done. And they're like, no, we're still in here. And we're not, I, what do I do? How do I, you know, and the questions are like, but what do, so what does that mean? And how do I fix this? And there's that whole level of energy out there. We know this, that people experience. This is like most of, of, of humanity. Uh, is there a message for them? Is there like, how do you help? How can we help? Because I know for the spiritually inclined, they're going to be like, oh, God, that makes so much sense. And then there's going to be other of us that are like, but I got, I got abused as a child, or I, I can't do this, or they've identified so much with the stories that they just can't seem to let yeah. go of. Is there like yeah. a way that, that we can help them right now with this, with our words? Yeah, look, simplify it. Because when, when we get lost in our stories, we overcomplicate it. And, you know, Whenever, when we simplify it, everything's energy. So our stories, the more we tell the stories and we add our, the, the moment of pain still into our story, we're still continuing that moment of pain and bringing it back into the present over and over and over again. Whereas we simplify it and go, you know what, that was in the past. So let's keep that moment of pain in the past and let's look at how I deal with it now without continuing the pain so how do i move beyond that moment of pain and it was a moment of pain and that even the most traumatic things let even let's say that it lasted four days well that's four days of pain but once you're out of that it's only your memory of it that continues it it's only you looking back into the past so on day five you're out of that but you're still in the same amount of pain it's because you're looking back on it mm. so you're not actually regenerate you're not going into new pain you and 10 years in you know 10 years into the future you're still living in that you're still yeah re-energizing a moment that was there to teach you something Mm -hmm. so often we look at going okay this happened to me rather than saying what did this teach me right and you start everyone listening you start asking yourself and revisit anything in your life and that you're still bothered about and ask the question okay what was it teaching me Ooh. and then and that's where the soul energy lies that's where the truth lies i'll always ask people what was that teaching you that day 
you know, it could be teaching you strength, resilience. It will be teaching you the most powerful things that happen to us, teach us the most powerful energies of the gifts we've got to use. You're speaking right to me, man. It's right to you. And I, I just want to, I want to like identify some things in here so people can understand this. Uh, I was born in a six month. I was born on a one day. His middle name, Edward, 6221. I was born under 22 year. So when you're speaking this to me, it's almost like a reflection of my light from another perspective, which is why I personally have such a profound experience listening to you. I'm like, oh my God, it's because well, obviously it makes a lot of sense. I, these numbers look like my numbers in a much of a different, uh, almost every way of the Rubik's Cube has another cool little crystal connection, which is really nice. That's the reason why I'm like, I like this guy so much. We like people that are like ourselves. But when you said that, two sensations. First, I felt this blanket of dissolve being like, oh God, that's so true. Like I you just, you kind of just like flick the light on. You're like, that's not actually a ghost. That's just a, a, a coat on a hanger. <laughs> like there's not like somebody standing in the corner of the room. You're like, ah, never mind. I'm so, yeah, no, don't worry about it. And like, you kind of like feel silly about it. And then the other sensation was this sh sharp pain that shooted right out of my knee. Went from my leg, my hip, went through my leg and it went tinkled me and tingled me a few times. I'm like, what's being pulled out of here? And I felt it like this sort of like small little nip that was like pulling right out of my left kneecap. So in case that was you listening from the future, I'm like, what? But uh, I, I believe that even by having this conversation, creating this space, we have one of the most powerful healing uh, creative spaces that we just kind of like putting two fires together and then they yeah. become one bigger flame. And uh, yeah, it was so, so super cool to, to be able to do this, man. Like this is going to be a lot of fun. So what is, so what do we look like here? We were, I, I, I need to, I clearly need to connect with you again. One session wasn't enough. Uh, we got to meet the misses. Do you offer like group discounts if, or discounts for people who buy three or four sessions or do they need that to work with you that many times? Like what's that look like? It varies from person to person. So it depends on the depth of level that they need. So I recently did, um, the most powerful healing sessions I've ever done with a lady just recently. She needed three sessions. Now to give you a little bit. So, we, so for those listening, we're going to really go out there now. So I was, I was actually doing some healing on her, but it was healing at angel level. So I was healing an angelic being because it had been trapped by the underworld. So I was, she had been speared about six or seven times pinned to the ground. Yeah. They was using her as an example. Um, yeah, so I was having to pull all these spears out. I was having to deal with the creatures that had pinned her. And then, yeah, it's just, and I was having to call on star energy to enact, to facilitate that. And it's just the most profound. So I was having to go into my, the energetic self I went into was Phoenix. So I went into an energetic version of myself, which is Phoenix, which is the most powerful version of myself that I currently know of. And so yeah it very so sometimes i can i can like with you bobby i, I shifted your life massive massively on the one session you know because it opened up because you came to me saying look I, I know my love's coming in but i don't know what's going on and then from that session to today you, you you're already married with a kid you know so that just shows you how profound one session with me can be mm -hmm. it all depends from person to person um and sometimes, and because sometimes the healings are profound, I might do one session and it might, it might take you two, three weeks, two, three months for your body to re-energetically align before another session can happen uh, or therefore the next level of whatever it is that's going on will come to the surface. So I only get shown level to level because there's no point in spirit showing me anymore because the person's not ready for it. It's like right now, right at the surface, this is what you need. So, you know, with that session with you, Bobby, right in that, in that moment, what you needed was your blindness to love shifting, mm -hmm. healing, so that you could truly see um, Sally for who she is. And, you know, and, and, even, and even talking and you felt that thing come out of your knee, again, that's just something being pulled out of you that you're ready to release. And, and you know, and it's strange. I cheat really. I just help people shift what they're ready to release. So sure. I do. Sure. I do it via their energetical truth because energetical truth. We're all energetic beings, and that truth is inside of us, and it's undeniable, and it's the most powerful energy we carry. And 
I just tap people into that and it means they can't lie to themselves anymore. And I just say, I'm going to give you this piece of energy that you're going to connect to, which means you will not be able to deny it. You won't be able to lie. You won't be able to cover it up. You won't be able to hide from it or run from it. And then it means you'll have to face it. And when you face it, you learn what it really is about and then you heal and then you move on and then you grow. And then the next version that you need to shift comes to the surface. And yeah, and, and that's the way we shift and heal. So in short, and the answer to the question is it varies from person to person. Some people need one session once a year or they might not never need a session again. It might give them the catalyst to go and do the rest themselves. Some people might need three sessions in a short, short period of time. It varies from person to person. So in regards to group sessions, you know, everything's, you can haggle with everything these days. I'd just say, well, just ask the question, you know, if, if you feel, you know, no, no price is fixed these days. And, and I'm, and the thing is I'm, I'm in permanent, I'm in permanent service of spirit. So they'll probably give me a heads up anyway. So if someone came to me and said, look, I feel like this is going on. It's going to take five or six sessions. Can we do it on a discount? Spirit will either go yes or no. And if they go, yeah, it's because, it's meant to happen if they say no it's because that person needs a lesson of wealth mm. that sometimes you've got to pay the bill if you really want to sort your shit it's going to cost this amount and it's and they're teaching that person and this is just one example of what the reason for that may be in that there might be, be being taught that sometimes you've got to pay the price to get the best for yourself so that person might have fears around money so they're being taught that you spend the money then more money will come mm. you've got to have faith you know, you've got to push that past that fear that you don't have enough. I appreciate that. Because money's energy at the end of the day. So there's always enough. There's always more of it to go around because energy is forever expanding. It's only our beliefs and therefore, which creates then an internal life manifestation that creates poverty within us. So when I'm, uh, so like, cause, cause I, when you say that it makes me feel like, if someone, if, if you guys want to reach out to Roy, you need to have this conversation. You can reach out to me. I'm on social media. My, my favorite place to hang out is, uh, is like Facebook messenger, uh, my Facebook wall. So, you know, as with any one of that, I, I would be so like, when you say with spirit has work for us to do, I'm like, can I recruit you for my team? Like, can we be like spiritual partners are we like, cause I see your light well, from my light. And I'm like, this is someone I'm going to know as a compass point to my spiritual awareness for the rest of my life. And that was like a really strong idea that I understood about you is that you're a sage. So to know mm. that I have someone like you to be able to refer uh, and to, to utilize for the people that need you, it's a wonderful thing. But where do you hang out? Like what's, what's the easiest way to get a hold of you that you prefer? So, um, yeah, on Facebook as well. So I've got a page that's a public page. It's Roy Obristow and that O is courtesy of Bobby from our, from our session together. He gave me the O. Well, I think he gave me an F and an X and an O. Yeah. And I think it took me about three months to grow to the O. And so I've always stayed there now and I feel comfortable with that. Nice. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so fine. Go onto Facebook, go to Roy Obristow, like the page. There's actually a, there's a booking link there as well. And then there's also my webpage, which is uh, www.soulenergytraveler.com, or one word. You'll find that link on the on the Facebook page as well. And yeah, and yeah, and you know, and when the time's ready, I'll be doing lots of lives. And there's always as much, as, as best as I can do. There's always some wisdom that gets up from day to day. You know, just a typical meme of. Um, so you know, one one that went up today. Let me bring it up. I just felt it was very relevant. Um, so knowing how to be solitary is central to the art of loving. When we can be alone, we can be with others without using them as a means, as a means of escape. And it was that list last bit that was profound for me without using them as a means of escape. So wow. basically it, it then means like when you learn to be on your own and walk your own path, because it's the only path you're walking down here, you're not walking anyone else's, you're only ever walking your own. When you fully commit to walking your own path, sometimes that is on your own, but only physically. Spiritually, I've always got about at least 10 guys hanging around, you know. It's never a quiet house in my spiritual house. Um, but So when you do that journey on your own, 
and you're, you're comfortable with being on your own, when you're with others, you can be fully present with them. And you're not thinking, oh, what can they give me in this space so I don't feel alone? That's never, a, you know, you, you've never got that background noise going on. One of the most profound things you can, anybody can do is learn to be on their own and be comfortable in their own space. Because then that also teaches you how to follow your own journey as well. So you're not relying on others to do your journey. You're not, you know, you're, you're not using people as a crutch. Guilty, super guilty. And I like to yeah. blame. I like to the majority blame. of the planet do that, but most of us do this, right? Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm like that. Where it was, and it was crazy because I was lacking in. I was lacking in self worth in a really large way. Suddenly, I meet my Sally. I feel like I'm important. She helps me produce my business, and all this thing happens. And then it comes down to this profound message. To, and I and I have that strong love and thrill of being by myself, being in my own space, being in my own energy, and. I talk for a living. I talk with people. I, we travel into the spiritual world together to be able to be in my own energetic space is like super vital for my uh, rejuvenation or my recuperation. Yeah. But uh, to learn this, it's like, cause, cause we didn't even get, cause we didn't get like 2017 guys, the end of 2017. It's been all of 2018 over half of 2019 stuff went down. Like things happened in my life. I grew through things. I had to go through much more sessions in my world as well. And it come full circle here to start tackling the next bigger stuff. You're not kidding. You heal one thing that needs to be healed at that moment. You don't know what's going to happen next or what's going to unload next or what's coming out of the truck next. You have to really be prepared for that and uh, mm. take one from Roy's book, embrace it and try not yeah. to hide yourself in the, you know, the spiritual quarantine and, and hope it's going to be like the, the shelter where you can hide until it's all over because it's going to happen again. And that's, I think yeah. one of the really big reasons why, you people make fun of the new age and the spirituality and all that stuff is because you're just using it as a crutch. And I, yeah. I'm a big fan of finding your own ground and finding that stability within you. Cause, yeah. cause our own journey can encompass a lot of different aspects. You know, yeah, I'm highly spiritual. So most of my journey means I'm always walking up there. I, you know, my challenge is to stay grounded at times and do physical stuff and just go and have fun in the physical world, go and play golf or, you know, and, but, that's that's but that's my challenge and and i i'm aware of that so i you know when when you have that alone time that's the time where you check in on yourself and going okay am i doing my journey as best as i can do on, on this day what do i need to readjust what do i need to let go of what do i need to bring in wow and, and, yeah because and, all our answers are within all of our answers all the answers you'll ever seek are within yourself Unreal. it just sometimes takes spirit to bring someone into our life to just give us that answer because we're not listening or we're not seeing because it's right under our nose. <laughs> I was just talking about this the other day when I was saying we can't even see our nose. We delete it and it's like right there in front of us. And yet our eyes are so accustomed to see it that we just, we can't even appear to be like present for what's common sense in front of us. But I just got this kind of like spiritual zap here, just throwing it out there. Um, I feel like this conversation isn't over and I like to keep, our time together at a respectable amount because people got stuff to do and there's an episode yep, yep. here. So I'd like to invite you back, but I yep. want to have a conversation with you privately about where I'm going through next in my world. Uh, I felt like when you were talking about that readjust, reshift, that was like, mm, that makes a lot of sense. And then yep. as soon as we have a lot of the same numbers, I'd love to do the same for you uh, to let you realize what's happened to me inside of my spiritual business in the last two years, the, the amount of clarity I've been able to, to come up with at this point. It's like, it's, night and day and i'm listening to you speak about me the way that i i read your numbers back when i was like a a baby business boy and now i'm mm. still in my youth i like to think but the reality is is that like i've grown quite a bit and the the conversation changes but where, yeah. where where you and i started was in a conversation about the right name learning about the, the gifts you have inherent with you our next numerological conversation now turns to the next decade you know, helping you plot some of these things out on the map just in case you've got big visions, desires, dreams. So for all, and usually the guys who are on my interview panel uh, are guests in my, my podcast, are clients of mine. Because you go, the guys that I've read your numbers. And we get, that's why I'm like, do you mind if we pull up your chart again? Because that's usually something I ask everybody that I work with so that I can, we can really get a, an insight into perspective of what makes a spiritual coach, a spiritual healer, someone who's going to be the, of that. Like, what, what does a show look like? A July birthday would help. A six and a five would help. This this traveler with love in a spiritual realm 
it kind of like all ties in together to your to the mix of who you are. So for me, yeah. I'm thinking, man, we got to continue this. This is going to be a series. You guys are definitely going to hear uh, Roy episode two. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting conversation because we're going to get it, getting a chance to go through some upgrades again. And yeah. uh, who knows, you know, maybe it might even be in person. When you're out here, you're sitting here with me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, sir. Go. Oh, that's going to happen. <laughs> that is going to happen. Absolutely. I still want to wait until November, though. I can't. I don't know if I can. If I can go that far. But uh, if you do find yourself out here in August, uh, we are having our wedding this month. So you're more. There's a seat at you at our table, man. I would love to break bread and have food with you. If in case you do come here a little early. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you something. If if I could, I'll I'll, I'll be there, mate. I'll be there. It's just yeah. Just your yeah, well, I, as I say, you know, we're on spiritual divine timing. Four months, but, uh, four months to it. Yeah, absolutely. But, meant but, to make and when, when you do, when we do connect, it's going to be absolutely powerful. Like I can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you so yeah. much, man. This is a really big. No, I'm, I'm just picturing me and you having a coffee in Vancouver somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It'll happen. It's cold. It's wet. It's early. <laughs> but, uh, Hey, who knows? It might, we have late summers out here. So, you know, the, yeah. in that time, it, it could even stop. Um, it's November. It's probably going to be miserable. Anyway, yeah. no worries. We'll bring the sunshine. You bring the rainbow. I'll yeah. bring the stars. It's fine. But I appreciate you, man, for everything you've done in my life. A, a big, huge gratitude and, and a massive thank you. Uh, you've you've up-leveled and upgraded my life in a very, very powerful way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you, you, you go down in the Hall of Fame of people that I absolutely recommend you need to work with, your bucket list of spiritual connoisseurs. This is someone you absolutely want to connect with on a very, very big level, uh, whether it be one session, change your life forever, or maybe you need to get pulled on a few times. Uh, Roy mm -hmm. makes it – he says this, this very loving feeling, but then also this kind of, like, sharpness that's kind of like, I'm going to say it anyway, and I'm going to be a bit emotionless in it, but then you bring a lot of love and care around it. So the way that yeah. you deliver, it's a fun combination to think you're going to sell yeah. it like it is straight. It could sting, but you don't make it sting. Yeah. Like you make it yeah. really impactful and powerful. Yeah. yeah. Just bring, cool, bring it through. Because energetic truth is uncomplicated. It is what it is. And, and the way I often describe it is, and I, said, I had actually said this to somebody yesterday, anybody that's lived over 50 lives down on here has been a murderer and has been murdered. So, and it's how the soul grows. The soul wants to experience those really powerful emotions because it have, that's how our soul grows. This is really like one big theme park to us yeah. as, soul, as energetic beings. It's like, oh, we're going to come down. What we are going to be this life? Oh, I'm going to be someone who's going to be, um, who's going to have that experience of taking someone else's life and, and feel through the emotions of that and, and deal with the recriminations of that whether they choose in that life not to be caught or to be caught and spend the rest of their life in prison and then deal with all those emotions. And then on the flip side of that same coin, you've got the person whose life was taken and, and they've chosen to come down here and, and to be, to experience what it's like to have their life taken. So I've to, so to have a really, really powerful moment of dread and fear as their life gets taken away. And, and then, then that creates ripple effects throughout our lives. But when you take it back to the soul energetic truth, it's like, yes, you as a murderer, you as a victim, let it go. You know, you chose that. So look at, and, and then, then we come back to that question that I said that everybody needs to ask, what was I being taught? Mm. And when you approach it from that angle, it takes all the emotion out of it because emotion is an egotistical third dimension, physical world thing. When you take people to their soul energy where the truth lies, there's no emotion. Huh. So that's why it's direct as a, and direct how it is. So I can hear, and I know we're coming at the very end of this, and we probably is a bad idea to start unloading a new topic, but I had this sort of inkling little pin drop in my head to be like, what about when you take your own life in a past self? Then you, you experience both of those, the one who lost as the one who also took. Like That's a thing in there as well too, I would imagine. Yeah, so some of the top, so I've come across some of these um, through talkers. I'm a medium as well, so I can talk to past on members. And through talking to some of them and experiencing their energy, um, they're, that's, they're there to teach everyone in their world something. So, whatever, so anybody that's experienced a friend or a family member that's committed suicide, again, look at what you was being taught by that person. Because sometimes it's there to put drive and power within you to change something in the world or change something within your world 
And without that person doing that, you would never have done that. It meant that your purpose was bigger. They, they did that to, to facilitate change in heaps of people in one go. So they chose to empower people through the act of taking their own life. It's a positive thing, never a negative thing. Wow. That's unbelievable. What a way to, 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 to lead us out and to just a, a huge paradigm shift because that's a lot of loss and a lot of pain and a lot of frustration. And, yeah. and so when you can change that in people, when you can take that pain and loss away and show them how it empowered them and they look at that from a different perspective, it creates happiness within rather than pain. It transmutes that all that pain to absolute happiness and joy. And they go away. And I've seen someone's face change going, I've never looked at it like that before. Wow. And then, then they're in absolute gratitude. And gratitude is the, the, the second energy below love. And when you can take people from victim to gratitude in one flip, that changes the world in itself. Unreal. You like, cause I, I, I just felt like that was one of the, the situations I was dealing with in my soul's karmic past history. And when you said that it almost felt like change just broke. And I was just mm. like, I'm feeling this strong level of quietness. I, I cannot wait to have an offline conversation, come back and do this again. Absolutely. Yeah. Must, must, must. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get a chance to meet Sally too. And it's going to be a really, really powerful time. Thank you. Roy. We, we so where I'll leave it, and this is this will be a teaser for all those listening. It's interesting that you're wearing a Marvel T-shirt today, right? Because you mentioned superheroes when we had our session together, and you picked up on things that I only I only even had in my own my own head. So the fact that you picked up on them blew me away because I'd, I'd not even voiced it. So I was like, yeah, yeah, you're channeling my higher self is talking to your higher self because it's the only way you'd know that shit. <laughs> but. Our path from here, Bobby, is going to be a, lot, a bit like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this is like the Hulk movie. It's only it's a tester. It's not really part of the big grander scheme of things. But the next thing that we start to work on together is going to be like Iron Man. So we've got, so you know how big the Marvel Cinematic Universe got to Endgame throughout the series of movies. That's what we're going to be working on. Duh. Yes. That's how big we're the things that we're going to be working on. Big changes. I'm glad that you see it that way. So That's over the next 20 years, we'll be working together. 20, was it 20 years, 22 movies over 20, 20 or was it 10 years? 10 years, 10 10 years, years. 22 movies. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make it one so, heck of a decade, yeah. man. 2020, let's go. But you look at that, the 22. Two twos. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun, guys. You heard it oh, yeah. first. You heard it from Roy. I've been looking for my superhero team, and here you are to help me out. Man. Like the spiritual foggy brothers. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> I appreciate you for everything you are in my life, my friend. I'm going to leave it here with you guys as well. And look at that. 3.33, my local time. Hi. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's enjoy that. All right, guys. You have a great rest of your day. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys soon. Roy, thank you once again, yeah. and we'll talk to you guys soon.